The code on the right of your screen begins by confirming that the cropped rectangular area of the source picture will fit within the destination picture when it is placed at the specified location. If the conditional clause in the if statement on the right of your screen returns true, the code in the body of the if statement will be executed. If that conditional clause returns false, control simply bypasses the body of the if statement and the source picture will not be copied into the destination picture. As was the case with the method named crop and flip, the code on the right of your screen declares two working variables of type pixel and type color respectively. Those two variables, along with various parameter values, are used in a pair of nested for loops in the code on the right of your screen to crop the source picture and to copy the cropped source picture into the destination picture at the specified location. The code on the right of your screen may look a little complicated. However, that code is doing nothing more than repl replacing selected pixel colors in the destination picture with selected pixel colors from the source picture. If you were to display the destination picture before returning control back to the run method, you would see the image that is now showing on the bottom left of your screen. As you can see, that image contains only one butterfly image that has been copied onto the beach scene image. The remaining code on the right of your screen causes the method named copy picture with crop to terminate and return control to the run method picking up where we left off earlier. The remainder of the run method is now showing on the right of your screen. This code calls the method named copy picture with crop again. The picture now showing on the bottom right of your screen is passed as the source image with the same beach picture as before being passed as the destination image. The offset coordinate values that are passed as parameters in the code on the right of your screen Specify the upper left corner location of the rightmost butterfly image shown on the bottom left of your screen. The final four parameters that are passed in the code on the right of your screen specify that the entire source picture is to be copied into the destination picture. In this case no cropping is needed because this image was cropped earlier in the method named crop and flip. When the copy with picture or copy picture with crop method returns on the right of your screen. The code calls the explorer method to display the current state of the destination picture 
as shown by the image on the bottom right of your screen. So here is a question for you. What is your interpretation of the code that I am highlighting now? The code on the right of your screen instantiates a new array object and populates it with references to three picture objects. A reference to that array object is stored in the variable named output and the variable named output or at least a copy of the variable named output is returned by the run method. This returns control to the main method shown on the bottom right of your screen. And the copy of the reference to the three element array object is stored in the variable named pictures. The code in the main method then uses that reference variable named pictures to extract the reference from each element in the array object and pass that the contents of that element to the print line method. This in turn results in the last three lines of output text that you see on the bottom left of your screen. So let's summarize what you have learned in this lesson. You've learned how to work directly with individual pixels and to keep track of their coordinate values. You've learned how to copy a portion of one picture into a specific location in another picture and you have learned how to crop and flip a picture. That concludes Lecture number seven, titled Cropping, Flipping, and Combining Pictures. You can learn more about these topics on my personal website at www.dickbaldwin.com.